Again and again, six years old male patient, known case of COPD, post cabbage four years back, came gasping in ER with severe desaturation and the hypotension. <clears throat> Patient was connected to mechanical ventilator with high setting, pressure control 22, respiratory rate 20, IE ratio 1 to 2.5, FI270, BEEP 10 with bad EBG, mixed metabolic and respiratory acidosis, BH 7.12, BCO2 62, bicarb 17, BO2 78, severe acidosis and hypoxia. Patient was giving 1 liter of normal saline, 500 BBF human albumin. Noradrenaline started 10 mic per minute, blood pressure stabilized at 120 over 65, heart rate 70 per minute, on concur 5 mg daily. This is the x-ray. The night team diagnosed pneumonia, bad pneumonia, community acquired pneumonia, and started to give fluids and connect on high setting mechanical ventilator. I, was, I saw the patient next morning, and here is the ultrasound assessment. As you all of you know now, how can we assess the patient? Start by inferior villa cava. Let us see the integrative approach for this desaturated and gasping patient. This is the inferior villa cava on controlled mechanical ventilation with good tidal volume. As you see here, there is some distensibility, some distensibility, but it's full inferior villa cava. Let us examine exactly what is the distensibility. Maximum diameter 2.36, minimum diameter 1.96. That means this inferior vena cava is full but distensible, which denote it could be, it, it may need fluid. It may be a fluid response of patient despite full inferior vena cava. But why the inferior vena cava is full? We need to go to, yes, heart. Barasternal long axis view, barasternal long axis view, very weak contractility, dilated left atrium. Short axis view, ischemic dilated myopathy, poor contractility. Four chamber view, dilated left atrium, poor left ventricle. Going with ischemic dilated cardiomyopathy will explain the full inferior vena cava. Color view, mitral gerge, moderate mitral gerge. So it is a complete picture of ischemic dilated cardiomyopathy, post cabbage, and the patient now developed pneumonia, giving fluids, one liter normal saline and the 500 human album, 5%, and the patient now has inferior vena cava, which is distensible, 20%, denoting it may benefit from fluid uh, intake, okay? But remember, the patient on high sitting ventilation, if I do 70 and the beep 10. It is, we need to complete the picture. We need to fit the puzzle together. Is there any other thing to do? Let us see. Unfortunately, the patient has multiple premature BVCs during examination. Because of that, LVTI is not conclusive in this patient. As you see here, the VTI, when, at the time we, <clears throat> we are looking for VTI, it was an arrhythmia, multiple premature beats, and this, as you see, fluctuating VTI, which we cannot consider this VTI at the moment. What we can do, we can wait until the arrhythmia controlled and repeat the examination again. And this what ha what this what happened. This a period of controlled arrhythmia. We started to measure LVTI. It is 10.59 centimeter, which is good. We can now, we have to, to the moment, let us fit the bottle together. The patient has ischemic dilated cardiomyopathy and the inferior vena cava denoting some distensibility, which is denoting we may give fluid for this patient, but the VTI cannot rely on. Now, the VTI we can rely on because no up no arrhythmia at the moment. So we can what we can do in the next step to be sure this patient will need fluid or not. Yes, leg rising. It's very safe for this patient. This is before leg rising and this is after leg rising. 
No significant increase in the VTI denoting the patient really is full, despite that sensible vena cava, but the patient is full. What else we can do? Yes, insert arterial line, and we can see for this pulse pressure variation, it's almost no variation. So at the moment, we can say our patient is full and no need for extra IV fluids. But the, another question is here, another question which is remaining. Is there any need to dilute the patient? Is there any rule for the LASIK at the moment because the patient on high sitting if I 270 and beep 10? Let us see. How can we do for the patient? We should look for the third most important organ in the integrative approach of critical care ultrasound, which is the lung. Let us see. Left lower loop and also it was in right lower loop. This bad pneumonia. Clear picture of consolidation and Air bronchogram, this whitish air bronchogram inside, and the blue and the blue red fluids. This is definite a community acquired pneumonia, which precipitated all of these for the patient. What else we found in the lung? We found a type of infiltrate which is beeline with dirty pleura and subpleural consolidation, denoting exudative infiltrate, denoting inflammatory infiltrate going with infection. What else we see? We found in the upper loops, especially in the right upper loops, we found this type of infiltrate, this type of P-wave, which have smooth pleura, thin pleura, no subpleural consolidation, which is going with congestion. And as you remember, this area of the lung in the right upper loop, it was clear in X-ray. What's happening? What, after giving IV fluids, one liter normal saline and 500 BBF, the patient start to get wet lung. This is a picture now, because this is really conclusive for the patient, this type of infiltrate, which is different than the inflammatory infiltrate. Why is this patient after one and a half liter colloid and dextroid develop this pulmonary congestion? Let us see the fourth important organ in the integrative approach of critical care ultrasound, which is the kidney. Our patient has a small kidney, ecogenic kidney compared to the liver, with small. This is the right side. This is also the left side. The patient has nephropathy. The patient has chronic kidney disease. How can we document that? We did renal duplex. This is the systolic, this is the end-diastolic flow of the renal duplex, the renal parenchymal duplex, and this is the resistive index, which is 0.8, which is denoting there is parenchymal, parenchymal renal disease of this patient. Because of that, maybe this one and a half liter makes the patient a bit in the congested side. Okay, what can we do now? Fitting the bottle together. Patient has ischemic dilated cardiomyopathy, developed pneumonia, leading to severe sepsis and hypotension. So, given one liter normal saline, 500 cc, human album 5%, and there is now severe hypoxia on high oxygen demand. Upper lung zone revealed B line with a smooth pleura and non sub pleura consolidation, denoting an element of congestion. IV fluids stop, 40 milligram lasix was given, and the patient passed 800 cc urine. And this is the upper lobes after the Lasix and the bath and urine. It's marvelous, unbelievable. Within hours, within our lung completely clear from the upper lobes. And see, within hours, if I to drop to 35%, with pH increase to 7.3, BCO2 drop to 30, 39, and the BO2 increase to 85. Marvelous, marvelous. But you need to know here. It is an, an integrative approach. It is multi-integrative approach. You need to not only to look for the inferior vena cava, but to look on the VTI, to look for the leg rising, to look for the X-ray chest. Sometimes the ultrasound, she need the X-ray, and sometimes the X-ray will need an ultrasound. It is multi-integrative approach. Insert central line, insert arterial line, and look for pulse pressure variation. Really, it's a difficult business, but you need to know, and thank you, for all of you for listening and if any comment you can i will reply inshallah and see you in the next uh, complete story bye bye